This is my dog, Goo. She's our childhood dog. She's um, about 13 years old. I've inherited her from my parents, and she is now my dog. Anyways, after posting my don't do this shit to your house videos, I received quite a few comments. If you hate all of this shit, then what is it that you do like? So I thought this week we could take a look at the trends that I hate and give you some alternate options, just some suggestions that I personally would do in replace of these trends that a lot of people are doing that I, I hate. So if you're interested to see what I would do instead of the orange arch behind your bed or shiplap on your walls, then this is the video for you. And if you like my style, then I guess just continue on watching this video. And if you don't, now's your time to click on pass because uh, we're about to get right into it. Let's go. So if you haven't watched my two previous videos of uh, don't do this shit to your house and more shit that you shouldn't do to your house, this is kind of like a little follow up on those. Let's start off right away with those round pillows, those round velvety pillows from West Elm or Anthropology or wherever these little things are sold. I get wanting to add something fun to your sofa and I feel like that's why people are so attracted to the round pillows because they're kind of different and quirky. But instead of switching up the shape of your pillow, I would suggest switching up the patterns and the colors of your pillows. So for example, example, you can go on Etsy and find vintage pillow covers or really any type of pillow cover that's a lot more unique than what you're you're finding at your local Target. So I think incorporating multiple pattern pillows adds like a really fun little aspect to your to your sofa. And if you don't like color, just incorporating different types of textures will add some type of unique touch to to your living room. I recommend when you're searching for pillows, check out Etsy. They have so many great pillow cover options that are pretty much the same price as if you were gonna shop at CB2. So for me, I personally stay away from switching up the shapes of my pillows and incorporate more patterns and textures and sometimes colors instead. Okay, so now let's touch base on the shiplap trend that everyone is doing on their walls and whatnot. So if you still like the look of shiplap, one of my suggestions is to just not go with the washed out white look and maybe doing a more mid-century type wood that provides a little bit more of warmth and shies away from the farmhouse feel it completely changes the tone of the room. It's literally the same thing. It's just changing out that color that changes the whole whole mood of it. I mean, even painting it a darker color or any other color but white helps it feel a lot less farmhouse. So that's one suggestion if you still want to do the shiplap on your walls. Another great suggestion to kind of spice up your wall if you're looking for something that adds a bit of texture other than paint is to add your own molding. You can actually go to Home Depot or Lowe's or even Wayfair and you can buy your own molding and install it yourself. It's super easy and it gives your home that kind of old antique feel that kind of goes with any style that you want to work with. If you're a more farmhouse style, this still looks good in your home, but even if you're a more modern or eclectic or even mid-century style, this also still looks great. You can put it up on your wall and paint your wall any color you want. This adds that old kind of vintage-y touch to your house. Now let's talk about your live, laugh, love sign that, um, uh, is in your bedroom or maybe your little sign that says laundry in the laundry room or the little sign that says eat in your kitchen and if you like them then keep them and if you don't here is my suggestion of a really easy alternate option to incorporate kind of a sleek type of art that's pretty easy. I'm young I don't have a ton of money to spend on really nice art and I really wanted some big art to incorporate in my family room specifically. One of the easiest ways to recreate really simple art instead of words, finding really cool objects that are super easy to paint. So for me, I personally love chairs. So I made a Pinterest board of a bunch of cool chairs that I loved and I decided to paint my own because that's the type of drawing that's super easy to recreate. You can go out and buy some large paper or even a canvas and paint a really large scale uh, piece of art that looks cool and doesn't have to tell you to drink your coffee. So now you're asking me, yeah, I painted this cool piece of art, but it's not framed and framing can be expensive. Well, if you go to your local Goodwill or Salvation Army or any thrift store, there is always an abundance of frames to choose from. I thrifted this at the Goodwill. I measured out the size. I painted a chair. I slapped it in there and I put it behind my couch. And anytime someone comes over, they're always like, that is such a cool piece of art. And I'm like, I painted that. And to me, that's a really easy way to incorporate really sleek and modern art without having to say family um, across your wall. <laughs> 
All right, now let's talk about some alternatives to the LED lights that are hanging at the top of your ceilings. First off, I already suggested that if you're going to have LED lights, just make sure they're hidden because I do like LED lights. I just don't like when people have them out because that's why they don't look good. LED lights, if you look at them, they're not cute. So that's, they're intended to be hidden. If you don't like that look and you still want to incorporate some warmth in your home, there is always a can light, which I talked about in the last video, incorporating can lights behind your plants or incorporating can lights behind your bed or wherever always adds a nice touch of warmth. Another really easy way to incorporate lighting in your space that I like is hanging pendant lights. You can really find these for pretty cheap now. They also offer a lot of pendant lights that you can just plug right into your wall. So if you live in a dorm room, instead of doing a bunch of twinkle lights or LED lights across the ceiling of your room, maybe find a really cool pendant light that you can just stick a little sticky hookup on your ceiling and then plug in the pendant light, hang it above. To me, it looks so much better. It looks less cheap and it's a lot more unique than what everyone else is doing. Hanging a pendant light above your bed or on each side of your beds is a super easy way to add that touch of lighting that I think everyone wants from the LED lights without actually using the LED lights. That also ties in directly with sconces. They offer a ton of plug-in sconces now so you don't have to actually hardwire this into your wall. If you look at my bedroom, I recently showed on my TikTok how I I installed two little pendant lights that just plugged in right behind my bed. It adds such a nice touch of warmth. It makes my room feel so cozy. You could do this in your dorm room or even get yourself regular sconces and then buy the battery powered lights that just stick right in them. There's tons of TikToks on that. There's so many options for pendants. There's so many options for sconces. So I just recommend doing something like that over the LED lights unless of course they're hidden. There you go. Voila. All right, let's talk about barn doors. My ultimate, um, trend that I really hate. I really would say that I think barn doors are my number one design trend that I do not like. Uh, over, over the arches, actually, the painted arches, barn doors are just if you are going to incorporate a barn door, doing something a little bit more modern and sleek, keeping everything really structural and very sleek and modern, incorporating a really nice wood, whatever wood you prefer, is a great way to have a barn door, especially when you are in need of that type of door. If you could have a pocket door, those are pretty ideal, but I know that there's spaces where you really cannot even have a pocket door. So if you're going to have a barn door, I just recommend showing as little hardware as possible. When there's barn doors that incorporate this much hardware, that's one of the main things that I would shy away from. Another great option is incorporating curtains. And I know that might sound weird. You have to do it correct if you're going to do curtains for a door. I think incorporating track curtains in replace of the door is a really, really nice alternative. First off, you do want these curtains to blend in with the walls. You don't want these to pop out because having curtains over a door is already a little bit of a risk. So if you're going to do them over a door, I do suggest keeping them a very neutral color that blends into your wall. You also want to make sure that they are pinch bleed curtains and you don't see the rods. We're in my office. We got my little desk and then I have these closet doors that I had no idea how I was going to have a desk and doors. So I had to do the curtains and I looked for hours and hours and I found out that these pinch pleat curtains that go on curtain tracks Oh my God, this is such a hilarious view. We're the best option. I found them on Amazon and I will link these ones below, but you put them on a track. Oh God. Don't pay attention to the inside here. This is our Murphy bed. We actually had installed some hooks for the winter to have our winter jackets. So yeah, they open and close super easily. They're on a little track. You can kind of hear them. So it's a really nice alternative to the barn door. It adds some warmth. I felt because they are a pinch pleat, they add kind of this sophisticated look like these that you see all over Pinterest. And I'm always like, where do you get these curtains? Because these are the, the best looking curtains out there, I think. And lastly, let's touch base on the painted arc that everyone is doing behind their beds or behind their credenzas or wherever they may be. I think the best alternative to this arch, if you're looking to paint something on your wall is painting half the wall one color. It's not a weird shape. It um, adds some dimension. It looks like you kind of have this headboard, but it's just painted on. So it's very close to the arch idea. It just is a little bit more sleek and a little less trendy feeling to me. Painting it maybe the same height a headboard might be, adding in some sconces, maybe adding in some art, some side tables. I think that this is such a great alternative to the arch if you are looking to paint something. On top of 
of this, you could add in a shelf, one long shelf going from wall to wall, maybe a shelf that is just the length of your bed. That's super easy and affordable to do. You can just go to your local Lowe's or Home Depot, buy some raw wood and put up a a little shelf. You can then decorate it with some plants, maybe some books, whatever knickknacks you want to decorate it with, maybe add in a few pieces of art. You could even paint half your wall and add in the shelf if you're really wanting to ball out. This is a great alternative to the arch that feels like it won't go out of style. Really, I don't know if it ever really will. It's just a nice sleek line. Whatever color you want, it just feels, feels a lot better to me. Another suggestion is to make your own headboard. And I actually made my own headboard as well. And I'm not even that big into DIY. I'm not a huge fan of DIY projects. I'd rather thrift or find something um, used than build it myself. I found it super easy to make my own headboard. So what I did is I found a really cheap one off Craigslist. Actually, I think off Facebook Marketplace. I picked it up and it wasn't even that bad of a headboard. It was kind of like just like a tufted whatever headboard. I removed the little buttons off of it and I went to a fabric discount outlet place found a really cool fabric that I liked and I took it home and literally just stapled it to this old headboard that I found it was so easy it required no skill and reupholstery or whatever you literally just fold the fabric over I'm sure there's tutorials on how to correctly do this I literally just kind of stretched the fabric and stapled it I actually highly recommend because headboards can be expensive if you're looking to buy something new it's such an easy DIY that doesn't really look like you made it yourself I've really never had anyone ask me if I made that headboard because it's literally just a piece of fabric that I tightly stapled over a pre-made headboard it's the easiest way it's the easiest solution. And because you're making it for so cheap, you can kind of pick a fun fabric because if you get sick of it, you can just go get another fabric and reupholster it yourself. I highly suggest this over the arch. It feels a little bit more timeless. It feels less trendy and it's more unique than what everyone else is doing. And God only knows how many arches were painted this year over quarantine. And that brings us to the end. I know I didn't touch on every single trend that I hate, specifically the faux vines or the foam uh, tables and mirrors. I don't really have suggestions for those. I just suggest not to do those but remember these are just my suggestions so do whatever you want I just personally don't like the vines and the foam tables so I hope you enjoyed some of these suggestions that I would personally do other than these these trends that are going around and remember design is subjective to each their own we're getting more into the things that I do like it's just easier to talk about the shit that I don't like because there's a lot of it I don't know what's next to come maybe another home review I've been contemplating on the idea of doing an interior design roast so subscribe if you want to see more uh truth uh behind interior design yes it's not all bubbly over here on this channel i have some some opinions on some stuff so if you like them stay tuned and i will see you on the next one say goodbye say goodbye